Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to tonight's matchup here at ISCC between the visiting 16-0 Richfield Tigers against the 5-9-1 Simsbury Trojans. Players are out on the ice right now. Simsbury, Richfield's still in the locker room, and our senior night festivities will get underway. The Trojans will be honoring 11 seniors tonight, and uh, our ceremony will be beginning shortly. Eddie Mateo will join me on the call a little later. Mike Sinecori is out tonight, and uh, here is Athletic Director Jeff Penny doing the PA for our ceremony. Nice round of applause for our senior families. Our first senior is Ben Holzman, number 16. Ben has been playing hockey for two years. He's a member of the JV hockey team. Next up is Mike Dwyer. He's been playing hockey for 11 years and he's a member of the JV team for the last three seasons. Next up is uh, Taylon Purdue, number 25. He's been playing hockey for 10 years. And this, he's been on the varsity team for one year, and his parting advice for his teammates is make the most of playing high school hockey and take in every moment. Great quote there by Taylon. Nice picture with his parents. Next up is Caden Halshide. He's been playing hockey for 10 years. He's a member of the National Art Society, and this, he's been on the varsity team for one year. And his parting advice for his teammates is, always give it your all and you can never fail. Another great quote. Next up is Anton Petrenko. He's been playing hockey for seven years. And this is, he's been on the team for one year on the varsity team, and he's going to UConn. And his parting advice for his teammates is work hard in whatever you plan on doing. Next up is Joe Mateo. 
Here comes Joey Mateo with his parents, Marie and Eddie Mateo. Great family, great family. He's playing hockey for 13 years. Joe's parting advice for his teammates is play every game like it is your last. Next up is Mark Vaccaro. He's been playing hockey for 10 years. His winning against Northwest Catholic last season is his favorite SHS hockey moment, and he plans on studying finance in college. And his advice for his teammates is make the most of your time on the team, and most importantly, have fun. Always important to have fun. Here comes Matthew Reese. Matt's been playing hockey for 10 years. He's been a member of the varsity team for two years. His dad is the Simsbury Hockey uh, Twitter handler. And Matt's advice for his teammates is hard work pays off. And Matt's favorite moment uh, playing SHS hockey was beating New Canaan earlier this season, 4-3 to second game of the season. Next up is Nick Pugmire, assistant captain. He's been on the varsity team for three years, and his favorite moment was also beating New Canaan earlier this season. And he plans on studying engineering, and his advice for his teammates is remember to have fun. Always important to have fun, win or lose, as long as you're having fun. And here comes assistant captain Kevin McDonough. He's been on the hockey team for th three, three years. He's with his sister Katie and his brother Ryan and his parents Mark and Kelly. Nice picture of the McDonough Five. Kevin plans on studying business in college and his advice for his teammates is keep working hard in practice and results will show in games. And our 11th and final senior is Captain Torben Wonderly. He's been a member of the SHS Boys Varsity team for two years. His brother Hagen also played on this team as well. And his favorite moment was from last season, the Northwest Catholic away game was his favorite moment. And he's gonna be playing lacrosse at Hamilton College alongside his brother. And his advice for his teammates is have fun and enjoy it while it lasts. Time flies when you're having fun. Nick Sinecori bringing you the action on these 11 seniors and their parents. <laughs> and our senior night festivities have concluded. It's supposed to be a 610 puck drop, but obviously that will be delayed. Nice ceremony for our Trojans. 11 seniors. Nice job by Jeff Penny doing the PA. Take a look at our seniors and their parents walking off. Pictures as they head off onto the uh, off the ice. So there's a hockey game to be played. It's going to be Richfield against Simsbury, number one team in the state, taking on the 5-9-1 Simsbury Trojans. Eddie Mateo will join me in a little bit. This is SHS Hockey on SCTV.
Ready? Do you nice national anthem sung by a uh, fellow uh, Simsbury High School student. Alongside Eddie Mateo, who just came off the ice. Uh, Joey, third Mateo third kid boy. in the yeah. program. Third and final boy. I still have one more with Kelly coming up the pipeline. But, you know, Jake, we've got, we've got a fantastic night tonight. And I'm hoping the seniors come out and play and really take it to them tonight. And, it, and it's going to be a tough test tonight. It's the 16-0 Ridgefield Tigers, number one in the state. Uh, challenge for the Trojans, who are 5-9-1. and one. What are you looking out of these guys tonight? You know, it's, it's going to be critical we get out to a lead tonight, Jake. You know, they, they are undefeated. They, you know, this is two Saturdays in a row now. We've come back and played two undefeated teams. For Simsbury, it's going to be puck possession. It's going to be get the puck to the net get out on top early, and then really push this team. If we get on top of them, Jake, they might start to get tight. They're not used to being in that position, and things may start to go our and way And Ridgefield is a very offensive-driven team. They've scored 95 goals in 16 games while giving up 19. Their average uh, margin of victory is right around five. Jackson Bolger getting the net, getting the start in between the pipes for the Trojans, and Sean Gordon for Ridgefield and all senior starting lineup for Simsbury. It's, it's going to be a, a real tough match for us tonight, and, it, and it's going to be interesting. So I saw this team play last year, and uh, I was really impressed by how they performed, and I, and I really thought that uh, they were one of the best teams in the state last year. So this year will be, uh, will be another tall task. We went down to Wonderland last year, and I think we lost five or six to two. Um, but, you know, at some points of that game, we didn't play very bad. So, I mean, I think we, we have a shot. And getting back, you know, our captain or our assistant captain tonight makes a huge difference. And, uh, and here we go, Jake. And we are about set to go. Puck is dropped, and we are underway here at ICC. Richfield wins the opening faceoff. Puck goes back into the Richfield end of the ice. I think Simsbury is going to want to play a 1-2-2 two, two tonight, uh, Jake, and really try to take away the neutral zone from, from Richfield. And that would be one of the things they have to do. Slow them down to the neutral zone and not give them the free, the free speed going through there and making plays. So that's kind of our keys to tonight. So I know Simsbury is very interested in, in really slowing the game down. And, and we I, got a penalty I, coming up. It's going to be a check to the head as Torben Wonderly got laid out by Will, looks, sorry, it's going to be Matt Walker and it's going to be an early Trojan power play just 36 seconds into the period. This plays into what we talked about, it, having a chance to go up early on these guys and putting the pressure on them. You know, Cole Chapman, one of the top scorers in the state, he's going to come out and get an opportunity right away here. And Cole has 21 goals this season of the 38 that the Trojans have scored, 55%. And on the tie-up is won by the Trojans. Simeon drops it back. He finds Fiango at the point. Fiango slides it over. And I nice save there by Sean Gordon. And there we and go. Simeon scores. Right from the start. That our power play came and answered the bell right away. And 19 seconds in, Scott Simeon finds the back of the net. 55 seconds in this one. It is 1-0 Trojans. This is kind of what we hope for, Jake, is to have us get out to an early lead and maybe put a little pressure on Richfield. They've got to be coming in here a little bit confident and cocky and thinking, looking at our record and thinking this is going to be a cakewalk. So uh, I'm hopeful now that we can... Uh, and a nice start for the Trojans as Cole Chapman gets kicked out of the faceoff dot off. This draw is won by Richfield. And Cole Chapman will get the assist on the Simeon tally. That puck is kept in at the line. And the net it came off its moorings. And we're going to get a stoppage of play face off to the right of Jackson Bolger. Slowing this game down is important for us. Not giving them the chance to go through the zone and get those quick clear out passes and making, the, making their play through the neutral zone. And it's going to be Nick Cullinan against Cole Chapman off the face off to the right of Jackson Bolger. And Chapman gets kicked out of the circle once again. That's two times. And Simeon will take the draw. And Simeon wins the faceoff cleanly. Fiang, sorry, Torben Wonderly slides it around Will Forrest. This is the top line for Ridgefield out in the ice who combined 
for 136 points last year. Nikki Colonin, Matt Walker, and Will Forrest. Kevin Fiang, Kevin McDonough, excuse me, tries to flick it out of the zone, kept in by Ridgefield. McDonough slides it, backhands it, kept in at the line. And Colonin scores. 5-4 on Bolger. And we're tied at one. So you got, we, we really got to work on getting that puck out. We had several chances to get it across that blue line and work the puck in the center ice. We've got to be careful. We can't make those mistakes of giving the puck up at the blue line. It's either blue line tonight. And McDonough tried to flip that puck out to center, kept in by the Tigers. 1-1. One, one. Eddie, you said it earlier. you got to get the puck out. And if you, if you turn over the puck and they capitalize, it's going to be a long night ahead. Could be a real tough game for us then if we don't start making plays there. So 1-1, one, one, just a minute 36 into this contest. F Rocco Cirilli dumps the puck into the corner. Rocco's been playing very well for us lately, and he's really been putting the puck in the net and, and being really a, a all-around good leader for this team. Cirilli working with Henry Garlic. Tigers take it out of their own zone. Tries to slide ahead. And Tyler Gordon. Tries to backhand one, but Jackson Bolger with the paddle. And we're going to get a halt to play as Luke Wells tried to tip it. Jackson Bolger right into the bread basket. So it, it's, it's, it's important Jackson touches the puck here and makes a save early on again after that first one. Off the tie, one by the Trojans, Bradley Wang. And... Cole Chapman fighting for the puck. Here's Bradley Wang. Bounces it off the boards and back out to center. Here comes Drew Leck, who had a, a goal and assist in Wednesday's game against Connor. Simsbury won that, won 4-2. Cole had four, four points on the afternoon, two goals, two assists. It was really Drew Leck show. Drew Leck had a phenomenal game. Uh, and we're going to get a penalty here, interference. And it will. I think that's going to be. It's going to be against Jake. Drew Leck. Yeah. Interference. Yeah, interference right in front of the Ridgefield bench. So a lot of things going on early on in this yeah. one. Two goals, two power Good plays, one. and <laughs> and we're not even three minutes uh, into this game yet. So the Trojans will be a man down as Drew Leck is in the box for interference. So it's this will be Ridgefield's second power play on the night. Goes Matt Walker, tries to there slide it over to Nikki Cullen, and that puck is back out. Two on one here, Two Jake. on one. Chapman tries to find Simeon, and that play was broken up by Simon Van Wees. We have had some success with uh, shorthanded goals this year, Jake, and I tell you, it would be nice to put one in here, get us back on top. we got to be careful giving Nikki up that Cullen line in. again. Same thing. And that puck goes in. Matt Walker... He touched it after the puck crossed the line. That's going to be Nikki Colonin's goal. So two power plays for Ridgefield, two goals, and it's 2-1 Tigers. We've got to be careful giving them too much room in that blue line. They're, they're making the blue line, and they're making us back in a little bit, yeah. putting a little bit yeah. too much pressure Just saw here. that right there by Torben. Kind of gave Colonin a little room to come in and fire that puck. It, it hit Bolger's stick, and it trickled in. You know, it, it, it's, we've got to really clamp down. We've got to be careful with these guys, giving them too much space. Buck is in the Richfield end. Again, turned around. Richfield's got a ton of speed. They're going to come with a ton of speed. And Bolter turns that one aside. And Interference got a penalty, penalty coming up there. Interference penalty coming up there. Play Joey Matei penalty. without the puck. Bolter to the bench. And that puck is touched by Logan Chang, and we're gonna get another interference call. So another power play. Let's hope we can be successful if we were the first one here. Penalty driven, power play driven, penalty kill driven, early going in this period. As Owen Luft Jr. will go to the box for interference, so this faceoff will come to the left of Sean Gordon. Cirilli, Chapman, nice win. Simeon. Nice win. Good look and there. Fiango and Wonderly. Power play unit out as the shot from Fiango. This is where we've got to be careful. We've got the power play here. Let's, let's not give anything away here. Let's just take our power play. 
Take a little bit of lumps down low if we have to, but let's keep the man advantage. Utilize all five guys on the ice. Work, work the puck to all five guys. We've got to be smart tonight. Yep. Puck control is going to be critical in this one. Off this tie-up. Wonderly. And that... Under the goalie's pad. He's got under it. Under the pad. And he got a little extracurricular activities. He was looking for it, so you yeah. wonder. You wonder. You knew what was that he wasn't really sure if he had the, if he if, he, if that puck was covered. He's given up a lot of rebounds, Jake. He's letting the puck bounce yep. around in there a little bit. So it's important that we get the shots on net and that we get to the net to take advantage of it tonight. That's been kind of a we haven't done a real good job of that this year, and. And I, I think, you know, if we can get the puck to the net and then make sure we pounce on some rebounds, we might have some success tonight. Yeah, if, you know, if I'm Simsbury, if I'm Chris Day and I'm seeing what, what I've seen, you know, Gordon is giving up a lot of juicy rebounds and you got to hop all over that. Absolutely. And put, it in, and put it in the back of the net off this tie-up is won by Ridgefield. That puck goes back out the center. Fiango tries to... you got to be careful there. we got to have Cirilli. possession. we got to have possession of the puck. And here we go. Here goes Rocco Cirilli, dances around. Cirilli back to the point, Wonderly. Wonderly throws one on net, and Almost. Chapman with the redirect just went wide. Good look by Wonderly to Chapman. And that puck kept in by the senior, Torben Wonderly. Simeon with the shot, and right into the gut of Sean Gordon. Good opportunities there. Nice, nice what I see there. We just had, we've uh, just missed a little bit on that one from the tip in from Cole. Cole is in a dangerous spot there. I like the opportunities we're getting. We've got we've got to start going after that puck and making sure it gives up some rebounds. Uh, we've been shooting at the middle of the net a lot. Yep. Util utilize all four four or five quadrants of the net. And a quick shot on Gordon. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie you, said, you said just said it, you know, instead of shooting right, right, into the, right into the gut of Gordon, utilize the blocker side, the glove side, the lower, lower areas, make Gordon work a little bit more. You know, a lot of that's confidence yep. and just patience. You know, when you're struggling to score goals, a lot of times you're, you're just happy to get a good shot off and you're not, you're not looking to redirect it. We've got a penalty coming up. A high stick, it's going to be on Richfield. This is perfect for us so here. Five on penalties. three. Five on three. Let's keep this going here. Let's tie this thing up. And I think the deeper we get with this thing, the more pressure we'll put on them. So this is the fifth penalty in four minutes and 37 seconds. It's going to be a five on three, two-man advantage for Chris Day's Trojans and the same power play group of Wonderly, Fiango, Simeon, Chapman, and Cirilli will be out for the Trojans. Jake, we had two five-on-threes on, threes on uh, a Wednesday, and we didn't capitalize on one of them. I'm hoping we clean some things up here and we make some plays here. You know, I, I don't know if that's the right shot there, right? So you had a five-on-three, no one in front, and we're shooting pucks from the point. I think we've got to work that down low or yep. make sure we have traffic before we let yep. it go. That, that's a goalie's dream. That's a five-on-three dream. Put some, put some bodies in front. Yeah. That, that's a gift to Gordon. No one's in front. He could see that puck clearly. We've got to start working the triangles down low and really yep. making them move around a little bit in that box. If they can sit in the triangle on a five-on-three and let them shoot from the point, that's, that's what they want. And Fiango long stretch pass to Rocco Cirilli. Cirilli bounces it off the boards back to Simeon. Chapman works it down low to Simeon. Wonderly See? with the puck. Get it front, get the back down door. Low. Back door. There it is. Chapman. That puck goes over the net, and that puck is down 200 feet where Jackson Bolger will leave it for Torben Wonderly. So 10 seconds left on the Luff penalty, and then it'll be five on four for the Trojans for a minute two. Simeon, Wonderly. Oh, the, opportunities. The, the nets off the moorings. No penalty, no, uh, no whistle. Richfield comes the other way. And Bolger steers that aside. I got a feeling icing's not a bad option for us a lot in our own zone tonight. Except we're on a power play yep. now. So I, I think we yep. want to make sure we get possession back and and that puck was fired all the way down the Olympic sheet of ice, bigger sheet of ice compared to the NHL size. This is what the ice they use in the Olympics. And old Chapman tries to bounce it off the boards and that puck is once again cleared by Richfield. 
So 11 seconds left on the Trojan power play. Couldn't capitalize on the two-man advantage. Caden Halshide gives it up to Kevin McDonough. McDonough with a shot and right into the gut of Sean Gordon. So we're back to even strength, five on five, 821 left in this one, 2-1 Richfield. You know, Jake, if anything, we've got some opportunities down there and we possess puck, and I think that's gonna be the helpful yep. thing for us. We've gotta keep putting the pressure on them and look for some bounces that go our way down there. So not a successful five on three, but you know what? In all things considered, we're, we're keeping pressure on yep. them and making them play a keep little bit down there. Keep firing pucks on Gordon. Eventually another one's gonna get by. Here comes Matt Walker. He flicks it out of his own zone. Here comes Will uh, we Forrest. Got beat again there. Forrest's shot that's deflected up high by. We've really got to be careful Torben giving Wonderly. up odd man rushes today. It's really going to be critical that we don't. Here comes Matt Reese the other way. Joey Mateo joining in on the rush. And that puck in the crease. Kevin's got to step up on him. And Colin there in. Go. Tried to go to his center. Will Forrest, this is a senior line for Ridgefield. Here comes Will Forrest and Kiki Kolonen and battling in the corner. Here comes Torben Wonderly. Wonderly tries to flick it to Mateo, which he does. Mateo tries to toe drag around number eight, number 19, Brady McSpedden. Clog up that neutral zone. Let's not let them build up any of that speed they possess. And that puck found its way into the Ridgefield bench and the faceoff will come, I believe, back out the center. Yes, it will. So Jake, our old athletic director, uh, Dane Street, is now working with Ridgefield down here. So it, it's, uh, I kind of follow his tweets a lot and, and it's, I'm wondering, uh, I don't see him in the crowd tonight, but nah. uh, he's gotta be proud of this Ridgefield team. Yeah, they have done a really nice job. They won the CIAC, uh, D1 State Tournament in 2017. They beat Northwest Catholic 6-2. Uh, this Ridgefield team has 12 seniors, so a very uh, upperclassman driven uh, team. And Fiango and... Gotta be careful here, guys. Christopher you gotta get Schneider. the puck out. Good play. Nice play. Good play by Griffin Marquis to slide that one into the corner. Here comes Drew Leck. Always a very physical player. There comes you know. Cole Chapman. There we go, we got a possible break. Anytime Puck's on uh, Cole Stick, we got an opportunity here. And Chapman fires one wide. I tell you, Mr. Marquis has played some really good hockey for us this year. He's really stepped in with the injuries to Wonderly and to Kevin McDonough. He's really, uh, he's really picked up the pace and has been a really good season as a, as a younger underclassman. And Torben was battling illness while Kevin McDonough oh. suffered a Broken collarbone and a turnover, and Griffin Marquis saves the day once again. Got to be careful through that middle. That that they, certainly not ideal in another turnover. Good save there. Got to be careful in our own zone here, guys. We can't let that puck be caught in the blue line there. Again, get it out. Just be careful. Just be. That puck will be there covered by Bolger. Get a whistle there. Richfield is so dangerous with the puck. You've seen it already early on in this game. Small mistakes and they jump yep. on it and they'll make you pay. So it's, it's critical we get really, really just very simplistic about getting the puck in and out of the zones. And don't, and, and you know, what my, my, what I say as yeah, this puck is won by Simsbury. Like right here, we gotta be careful here. Don't make the don't make your game more complex than it needs to be. Exactly. Just play 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 to, play to your own strengths and don't don't try to do anything fancy. As Simeon fires the puck deep into the Ridgefield zone, different view here tonight. We're usually up in the perch, but we're in the corner on the Simsbury side, across from the benches. So different view for our viewers back at home who are watching this one. It's two one. Richfield, Simsbury jumped out to a 1-0 lead thanks to Scott Simeon. And Richfield has scored two unanswered goals since. And Chapman's shot. Great shot, right to the corner. Great and shot. And a right, le right pad saved by Sean Gordon. Here comes Cole Chapman, slides it up to Scott Simeon. Simeon tries to find Drew Leck. That puck hopped over to Leck's stick. Here it is. 
And Chapman, unlucky, just had a nice force of turnover there. I know Simsbury has kind of kind of turned over a little bit what they want to do on their four check-in, and I think they've, they've done a little bit different tonight in anticipation of Richfield's skill. I think they've gone to a 1-2-2 two, two to really try to clog up the middle and not let them get too much speed. And I, we, we've seen it a few times. And Tyler Gordon dumps that puck in. And a battle on the half wall, kept in by Richfield. If Shot knuckleballs past Jackson Bolger. Here comes Kevin McDonough. Kevin's got to be careful here. And he that, can't Eddie, get you creative. just said it earlier. Cannot take the puck uh, on the middle. And Kevin McDonough, little. And nice shot by Goal. Leck. And scored by Nick Puckmeyer. And we're all tied up at two. Here Three we go. 50 to go in yeah, period number you. one. We've answered the bell. That's it. Just got to stay in this thing, Jake. Just stay in this game, right? And Leck made it happen. A nice shot there by Leck. Gordon could not, could not control the rebound, and Puckmeyer took advantage, found the back of the net. We're all tied up at two. So it's what we talked about, right? Putting pressure on them, looking for rebounds. He's given up a lot of rebounds, and that's going to be the key to us. If we can take advantage of some of those rebounds, then I think we'll be all right. And that's something I'm sure Coach Chris Day is going to tell his Trojans is to know that you know the opposing goalie is giving up a lot of juicy rebounds, and if you could keep doing what Leck and Pugmire just said, you're gonna you're gonna find success. Just keep going to the net with the puck and the right? turnovers. Keep now, don't bring the puck up in the middle from your goaltender, it's Joey Matteo, uh -huh. and Wonderly flicks that puck back in at the late offsides, and the Trojans touch up. It's Matt Walker. Number one line of Forrest, Walker, and Cullinan. Chapman dances around. And Chapman decides to just backhand it around. Under three minutes to go in this opening period. 2-2. Two -two. Now, Jake, it's critical right now. It's critical right now. We have what, we've done what we really wanted to do is just keep staying close at this point. We just got to be careful. We, we watch where the puck is here. Not make any give ups. Watch the guy hide in the slot. And fires from the point. A nice save there by Jackson Bolter. And Colton gave Bolter a little stick tap after Bolter corralled that puck. So both teams have, found, have uh, some quality chances. I'd say Simsbury has made, has made Tyler Gordon uh, work and uh, Jackson Bolger has seen a lot of action as well. It's been a good period for us. I know it's 2-2, but this is what we kind of hope for, right? We kind of hope to stay in this game, keep it close to the vest. We've got to get the pucks out. We and can't good, keep giving the pucks up, guys. Again. It was a, a good start as well with the Simeon goal, just 36 seconds into this one. And speaking of Simeon, he fires the puck cross ice into the, to the Tiger zone. See, this is that neutral zone now. We've got to slow him down. Perfect. Let's take him out now. Get the puck out. Don't be creative. Let's move the puck out. Fiango Let's move the puck out. Slides it to Bradley Wangle, bounces it off the boards. I don't, you know, we got we can't try to be too creative here. We want to get we want to get out of this period without any big turnovers here. And Keys Van Wees fires that one on Jackson Bolger. Aaron Livingston. Get this deep, get it deep, get it deep, get it deep, get it deep. Diango slides it off the boards. Comes Ridgefield the other way, two on two, and Luke Welsh decides to just dump it in, and it's the Tigers will get a fresh, fresh set of legs out on the ice. A minute 18 to go, and a penalty coming up. It's gonna be against Simsbury. Nice shot blocked by Torben Wonderly. And it's going to be a cross uh, check. I think Mr. Hellshire is going to go. Yep. It looked like a tough call. I thought that, uh, you know, I thought the kid had possession of the pocket. It might have been from behind a little bit, yep. but I, I got to think that was a... They're calling it close tonight. Yep. They're calling it close tonight. They're really being tight with what they're seeing and what they're calling. So. so a late power play for Ridgefield. This is their third power play on the night. Off this tie up, it's won by Simsbury, but Richfield gets possession. And Will Forrest slides it back to Nikki Cullinan. Call 
and then that back door. And bounce it off it the boards to Forrest. They're going to bring all of our forwards down low to make sure they don't, we don't let that back door happen. That, that net's off. That net's off. And, and Kevin McDonough is going to get called. That's the right call. Uh, right you know after what? the whistle. I, I, I think that's a touch call. And I think yeah. that, you know, it, it's one of those things where... And as you said, the, the, the officials are calling it tight. They're calling and, it really tight tonight. You know, and, and I think that, you know, Kevin did the right thing there. He, the puck's rolling around. You want to make sure they're not getting extra pokes at it. Yeah, after, after the whistle was blown, Kevin decided to give a little shove, and that's what, that's what got him to the box. So a five on three with 48 seconds left. So, Jake, it's critical we, don't, we, we get through this period. We get through this period without, uh, on the five on three, at least we'll get, a, we'll get some fresh guys back out. And Matt Walker finds the back of the net off the feed by Will Forrest. And it is 3-2 Tigers. Unlucky. Unlucky there. And, and that's kind of what we were talking about there in our five on three. They see the nice triangle set up. They're pulling the guys around, making them come out, making them play. It's, it's, it's got to be moving the puck down low on five on threes. The shots from the point are not going to... Against a good team, the shots in the point aren't going to make a big difference. And off the faceoff, Chapman sticks it into the Richfield zone. This is dangerous here. Played so well today, and now yeah. we, we can't go in two goals down going to the third. Walker tried to find Colin and Col Colin and fanned on the shot. It's a down low to Walker, and that play is broken up by Torben Wonderly. Ten seconds left, and Chapman on a breakaway. And what a that's save a, that's by a, that's a, Sean Gordon. And, and the ice. icing will be called with the goal one here. seconds left. I tell you what, that would have been that would have been what we needed, Jake. To yeah. go in 3-3, giving up a short, getting a shorthanded goal would have been a critical piece for us. And going made a heck of a save on it. Eddie, you've said it earlier, they're going to pull Bolger six on four for a second. But you know, if Cole found the back of the net, that would have been a huge momentum swing going into the going huge to the first shift. intermission. Would have been a huge shift for us. As it is, we're still looking uphill. The 116 left on the first power play. So, and Cole made a good move. He decided to go with the backhand, try to change it up a little bit. Hey, Cole is one of the best in the state and at that. So, I mean, I think he uh, that goalie made a heck of a save. This period comes to an end as the clock. Operators didn't press the horn, so the referees decided to blow the whistle. So it's 3 2 Tigers, Richfield, after 15 minutes of play. Trojans will be on the penalty kill for the first minute 16 on this period. Uh, Eddie, we saw a lot, a lot of goals, some turnovers, but just, you know, a lot of penalties early and just a, just a lot of goals. Yeah, I mean, the period, the period kind of went. Went how we hoped it would go for us. We stayed in it. It was a good opportunity with the, with the five on three. Great opportunity with the power plays. We've got to cash in on those opportunities, and we've got to stop them from getting wide open shots in front of Bolger. And a good start so, for and a good start for the Trojans. Sitting in finding back of the net, just 36 seconds into this one. It's going to be critical how we come out for this second period to make sure we kill this penalty and start momentum. Yep. What I'd like to do now is bring in our athletic director, Mr. Jeff Penny. I'm going to let Jake interview him here, give him my microphone. Simsbury High School Athletic Director Jeff Penny. Jeff, great seeing oh, you. Thanks for having me up here. S special night here. 11 uh, seniors getting honored. Uh, what does this night mean uh, for you and the entire Simsbury High School community? It's, it's so much fun when we get through these senior nights. Uh, you know, these kids have been here for years. These families have been here for years. There's so much that goes into the career of any student athlete at Simsbury High School. Every one of these nights is a celebration, and every one of them is special. Every one of them has a history and a story behind it about what this community means to these families and what these families mean to these to the community. And, and they're all just a joy to be a part of. Yeah, and you know, a lot of these kids have been playing hockey together since they were in elementary school, and you know, carrying on the tradition of playing with them, developing a brotherhood is, critical for, is, is so important to them, not just in hockey, but in any sport and continuing to take it to the next level is just something that, you know, parents and the, their families love to see. It's, it's a huge part of where our coaches and programs are going. 
Um, we talk as, as a coaching staff about the importance of you know, bringing it down to the youth level and tying the youth level to the high school and making sure that we're all a part of the same um, process and commitment. And it's a celebration, especially in hockey. You know, yeah. these kids come through and they have played since four or five. You know, I was here at eight this morning. My son plays. Um, he's a six-year-old and, and there's 65 kids in his group. And, you know, I, I was walking when I got here at around 4.30. I was looking at all the signs over at the other end. And I've known a lot of these kids since they were, you know, young, since they were very young and, you know, realizing that, wow, it's senior night for them. They're off to college next year. It's just, the time flies. It really does, and, and it's a joy. I, I'm, I've been in Simsbury, this is my eighth year now, and then I've gotten to meet so many great families, so many great kids. Um, every one of these nights is, is special, but it's such a consistent process of really just trying to create the best experience and the best platform and opportunity for these kids to go out and be successful. It's a joy to be a part of. And the ceremony was great. All the all the you know senior night ceremony, seeing the parents in there, you know the players' siblings out come out and get that group photo. It's something that they'll always remember. And playing the number one team in the state, you know that that kind of uh, that kind of adds a little unique element to it as well. It's it's an interesting it's an interesting senior night. We you know sometimes. Coaches have different philosophies on, on who they want to play. And, you know, Coach Day, he's trying to take the program forward. And, and he said, you know, we looked at the schedule and he said, you know, this is the game. This is the game for us. This is an important game for us. Senior night always means a lot to us. We want to bring our best in that game. We're going to play the number one team in the state. Let's, let's make it that. Let's and it's there. been an exciting first 15 minutes of this one. And the Trojans jumped out early on a one nothing lead thanks to Scott Simeon just 36 seconds into this one. And... This has been a very fun first period. I'm excited to see what the ne next 30 minutes bring. It's it's been intense. Yeah, I tell you what, it's it's certainly uh, there's a, there's a level of commitment right now going on on both sides, yep. uh, both teams, and, and they're getting after it. And, you know, and this is this is going to be a great game. Jeff, thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure. Always Thanks a great night. Me. Senior night is always one of those fun nights. And after 15 minutes of play, it is Ridgefield three, Simsbury two. All right, we are back here at ISCC, Saturday, February 9th. This is game 16 on the year for Simsbury, and Richfield comes into this middle frame with a 3-2 lead, and the Trojans will be on the, will be a man down for the first minute 16. Uh, Eddie, what did you see in the first, when, what would you like to see uh, Simsbury do you know, here you in know, the second? Jake, you know, it, it's just, Outside of that last goal, Seasbury played a really good first period. We stayed in it, we put the puck on that, we got to some rebounds. We've really got to come out of here this minute 16, kill this shorthanded, and then start momentum back our yep. way. You know, I thought I thought we had great opportunities with the five on three, and, and actually the, the shorthanded breakaway at the end of that period really could have flipped this score around yeah. a little bit. And I think would have gave us a little more confidence. But it's 3 3 instead of 3 2. We don't go down 4 2 here. And I think it would be a confidence boost for us and really put this game uh, into a real competitive advantage if we can come out here and kill this penalty. And Richfield comes into this contest, as we said it earlier, 16 and 0. And this is their fourth game of the week. They, they, they've, they've had four games in about six or seven days. So, you know, their legs could be a little sore, but, you know. Let's hope you know, so, they're young. Jake. And they're <laughs> young. And you know what? They play. That's a lot of hockey. That's 135 minutes of hockey. And Simsbury just played on Wednesday. 4-2 win against Connard. And, you know, taking that momentum into this one. Obviously, a, you know, an important and a huge night, but senior night, but there's a hockey game to be played. Right. This is, I tell you what, and, this, and the hopefully we'll take some momentum from the senior night and really flip this into our advantage here. Here we are, and ready for second. second period here in Trojanville is underway. Some, Richfield wins that, that draw. Ooh. A little interesting move there by Matt Walker, taking in front of Gordon another, and Jackson another shot Folger. Right in the Right in the, in the in the garden spot there. We've got to make sure we cut away the middle of the ice. We've got to stop with get them to have that middle of the ice presence. Will Forrest in the corner. He's Van Wees and there's Nikki Cullinan. Back to the point as Simon Van Wees drops it back down to Nikki Cullinan. That deflection goes wide. Again, they're getting a lot of opportunities right in front, right in that middle between those two dots. Dangerous area. 
Real dangerous area to get let them have those opportunities. Here comes Matt Walker. Will Forrest, that puck is off his skate into the corner. Chapman gives Forrest a little bump. Excuse me, that was Torben Wonderley. There we go, that's that, what we need. And that puck is cleared back into the Ridgefield zone. Long stretch pass ahead to Nikki Cullinan. That puck is dumped into the corner. And Simon Van Wees. Watch that back door there. There we go, perfect. That, that puck is cleared again, and they Sinsbury kills off the McDonough penalty. We're back to even strength, five on five, and a long stretch pass, and Nikki Cullinan drops it back to Will Forrest. Stops in the corner. Taken up by Nick Pugmire, bounces off the boards, and Daniel Parson will fire it into the Richfield zone. Bradley Wang. Backhands it around his own net, the Pugmire. Mr. Reese. Matt Reese tried to find Drew Leck. 22, Mateo back in the zone now. Here we go. Let's get on some offensive turn here. Let's get a four check going. 11, Matt Reese. Joey Mateo, Matt Reese, Nick Pugmire. Forwards out right now for Chris Day's Trojans. That was a big kill for us, Jake, and hopefully we'll start turning some momentum around here. And Jackson Bolger will leave the puck for his defenseman. Luke Welsh just fires it into the Simsbury zone. Richfield Mike. does a nice job dumping, chasing, but they've got a ton of speed. They can get away with doing a little bit of that. And Joey Mateo battling along the half wall. That. I think that could be a, you know, if, if we get a few icings tonight, I think that's not going to be a problem for us. I'd much no. rather see us relieve no. the pressure yep. and just get a restart when we have, we're in a little bit of trouble and get a little frantic in there. So an icing on the Trojans, and this faceoff will come to the left of Jackson Bolger. Trojans skating right to left across your television, Ridgefield going left to right. And this faceoff comes to the left of Jackson Bolger. This puck is won by Simsbury. Here's Too Simon much. Van Wees and nice off goal. the shoulder nice of Jackson Bolger. And Bolger covers it and there's some extracurricular activities after. And Kevin McDonough controlling Simon, controlling Keys Van Wees. So they're, they're gonna crash that net. And it's, it's our responsibility to keep that front of the net clean. And I think uh, without Torben, without Kevin early this year, we really struggled with that. We left too much traffic in front of that net. And it was a- uh, And two big bodies, you know, Kevin and Torben, you know, camping right in front of Bolger, protecting Jackson. Tigers taking it up in their own zone. Black jerseys with orange trim and waffle boarded away by Jackson Bolger. That deflection goes wide. Kevin McDonough working with William Stewart. McDonough battling in the corner along the half walls. Simeon will chip it into the Ridgefield zone for another icing. Not bad, not bad. As long as we're not giving up those odd man opportunities in front of the net, Jake, I think we can we can withstand some of this pressure. We're rolling out our top line again here with Chapman, Drew Leck, and Scott Simeon here. So it will be critical of these guys to make sure we, we make you get a clean breakout and stretch the ice a little bit with Cole. That's been kind of the key for us, is hopefully stretching the ice with Cole a little bit and getting a little opportunity for us to really, to really put a little pressure on their defense. Little delay here. It was a puck issue or something along, probably a puck, he was, official was waiting by the Simsbury bench for a puck. And this face off will come to the left of Jackson Bolger after, after Simeon iced the puck. Off the draw, one by Simsbury. Comes too Will much Forrest middle, in too all much alone. Middle. Good save. And a nice blocker save there by the junior netminder, Jackson Bolger. Will Forrest tries to dance around. Forrest battling along. Torben Wonderly gives Will Forrest a little wake up call. There's Nikki Cullinan, the Bridgefield top line out, 
out in the ice. They combined for 136 points last season. Nice save there by Jackson Bolger. And Matt Walker tried to follow it up. Too much room. Too much room again. That one high. Too much room. Get it on net there. Nope. Unlucky. Okay. And another icing on Simsbury. So Richfield is Richfield's finding a lot of space. And they're gonna they're firing a lot of pucks on Jackson Bolger. Simsbury's gotta do a, you know a little bit of a better job, you know, condensing that space a little bit. Where we've had problems this year and we've given up goals is we've given up the middle of the ice too much. And and, and especially against a team like Richfield with all the talent and speed they have, we've got to take away that middle. It was a good opportunity here. Comes Rocco Cirilli. Dances around. Simeon battling along the corner. Simeon Chapman fires, saved by Sean Gordon. Good opportunity, real good opportunity. That's where we worked that high triangle there, got the puck down low, won the battle down low, and got an opportunity. Good look there by Scott to Cole. It's you good. know what? I tell you what, if we can if we can keep putting the pressure on like that, keep moving that defense around a little bit. We're gonna beat one, we're gonna get one by him. He's given up some rebounds tonight, so we're gonna get some opportunities. Richfield wins this wins this face off. And it's Rocco Cirilli. Back down to Logan Chang. Up ahead is Jack Pereira. And Luke Welsh will backhand it into the Simsbury zone. Too many guys in behind that, careful. All right, here we go, good. A little speed coming out. Cirilli. McDonough, that's McDonough. Yeah, McDonough, we got an icing here. Yep. It looked like Cirilli's stick got it in between the in between the midsection. I think that was McDonough. Yeah. It was our defenseman McDonough. Got a little bit. Yep. Got a stick caught. Nothing intentional there, which is good. Yep. And we're gonna we're gonna get ourselves an opportunity here. Good I no think. call. Just a little incidental. Off the tie up, it's won by Simsbury. And it's gonna be offsides. That's a tough call for where that guy was standing over there. I, I, that's, a, that's a rough one. A little over to five, little, play a little over to five minutes in this period. You see since we were rushing one, we're trapping with the other two. Trying to make sure we keep them in the zone. Don't and let them get some neutral zone stuff. Daniel and Parson, long it. stretch pass to Henry Garlic. That puck is deflected wide. Puck hits Cirilli in the shoulder pads. Here we go, a little two on one here. Good opportunity. Two on one. Good opportunity here. Here's Matt Reese. Flicks on, on net. Sean Gordon. Owen Luft. Back out the center. Good pinch out, big pinch out. Let's move it, move that puck out of the zone. Bradley Wang. It was Owen Luft back to his defensive partner, Daniel Parson. Logan Chang cross ice to Owen Luft and Richfield will get a... Let's go, our chance to break out here. They're a good change for them. Fresh That's off of them. Of That's off of them. That's off of them. Yep, no, no icing ice, there. No ice. Off Gotta hurry the, up. Don't let that guy get free. And a long stretch pass ahead to Matt Walker. Gets taken down there by Torben Wonderly. It's a long change for Simsbury at this period, so that's a tough one. We gotta be really careful, the puck's deep. Tie up some Nikki sticks Cullinan. here. Back to the top. And that puck there is that's what we need. offside. There we go. Simon Van Wees unable to uh, control that puck inside his own blue line. That's why there's a stoppage of play. 820, 8.25 looks like left in this second period. So Jake, as we both know, this next goal is critical. So ho hopefully Sinsbury gets this yep. puck going the other way here a little bit. Tie it up. They get that third and get that third goal tied up. This is the line. We gotta have a little bit more. Chapman, Scott Simeon's shot. That was deflected by Nikki Coleman. Good defensive play by the senior winger. Keep that Torben puck Wonderly deep. tried to find uh, Scott Simeon. That puck was intercepted in that puck behind the play. Good turnover, good possession turnover there. We just got to be careful we don't give the puck right back to them. So 7.58, a little under eight minutes to go in this middle frame. 3-2 Ridgefield. 
senior night, Eddie Mateo, Nick Sinecori working the camera, Jake Ostern bringing you the action on Saturday, February 9th, 2019, game 16 on the season for Simsbury. First three games in five days for the Trojans. Up kept in and there we go. Good. finds its way into the glove of Jackson Bolger. So for Jake, Monday night, 8 o'clock, uh, we have our Battle of the Burries coming up. Glastonbury comes in for a rescheduled game and something we do every year with them at Sinsbury Farms, the outdoor facility here in town. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a special evening and, you know, we're very proud to have our outdoor rink and have our own winter classic. Great we, opportunity to, uh, to see some outdoor hockey. And we will be there on the call. For that one and the Farmington Valley game, the last uh, home regular season game for the Trojans, and they finish off the regular season with two games on the road. Watch that guy at high slot there. All right, good. Matt Walker, nice, good play by Torben Wonderly to win that battle with Matt Walker. Good job by Rocco Cirilli to chip that puck back out the center. Simon Van Wees up ahead to Matt Walker. Walker. Too much. Good save. Good save there by Jackson Bolger. Watch that guy in the high slot. No Rocco's ice. Rocco's on pressure here. No ice there. Good play by Rocco. Keep him penned in. Slow them down a little bit. And he gave McSteven a little. Uh, unlucky. That's a penalty. Unlucky. Unlucky play there. Unlucky. So it's going to be a tripping call on Scott Simeon with 6.40 to go in this second period. And, and it will be a Richfield power play. So we've seen a lot of power plays, uh, chances for both teams. This is another one for Richfield. You know, it's it's just an unlucky situation yep. going for the puck there. Uh, we did a good job forechecking. We made him stretch a little bit, and we just we just made a stick was in the wrong area. Yeah. So Richfield, you see on your television monitors, there are on the power play, and too Will much Forrest. down low. Too much down low. Uh, there was there was it looked like a mix up on the defensive end there. It looked like. I'm sorry, no, that is going to be Brady McSpedden. I'm sorry, that's not Will Forrest, Brady McSpedden. There was something happened down low. Uh, I, I'd have to see a replay to see it, but it looked like it looked like uh, Brad was on the guy and then switched off to the guy in the back back part of the net. And when that happened, the puck came to the guy right in the front. And we can't we can't give open opportunities like this. We've got a little more heavy and physical in front of that net. So 17 seconds into the power play, Richfield capitalizes, and it's 4-2 Tigers. That goal comes at 8.38. Need something to turn this around. We need something to turn this around a little bit here. Now get a goal, cut it within one to go into the... And that shot by Richfield player is deflected out of play, the netting behind the net, and that faceoff will come Puck will stay inside the Simsbury zone for another faceoff. Real quick line change here. I, I, I guess uh, I guess he wants to match lines with our top line. Real quick change of pace there, though. Yeah. Puck won by. Excuse me. This faceoff won by Richfield. See, that's, that's been a, you know, he, he, this, this top line gets a ton of ice. So you hope they get enough to carry through in the third period for us. And it's tough as a player who doesn't get this top line ice time because they don't get a lot of rhythm of a game. When you get one shift every four minutes, it's really tough to get something going. Here comes Cole Chapman. Chapman banks it off the backboard. Here he is. Uh, and Simeon with a good look to Cirilli, but it was out of Cirilli's reach. And here comes Nikki Cullen in. Good play two by on Ke one Kevin if McDonough. We hurry. Rocco Cirilli, sh shot goes over the glove hand to Sean Gordon, kept in by Cole Chapman. McSpedden and turnover there by the Tigers. Got to get back. Got to get back. They're coming. Got to get back. Well, Forrest tried to find Nikki Cullen. That puck was intercepted by. 
assistant captain Kevin McDonough. Here comes too Will much, Forrest. Too much, too much, too much. Nice move there, but that shot is wide at Jackson Bolger. Good speed. Good speed, Reese. Good speed with Matt Reese. Reese. Nice pass, Mateo. Oh. oh, good look by Joey Mateo to Matt Reese, but Reese unfortunately could not put it in the back of the net. That was a great look by Joey Mateo. All started with some neutral zone speed up the gut with, with, uh, with Matt Reese. Really took the zone with a little bit of, a lot of pace. And what happens, it really drives back that defenseman. It causes havoc. That's the key. You get some neutral zone speed, and you're really going to make a difference. And you saw the end result of that. Good opportunity, good give and go between Matteo and Reese, and uh, just unlucky again. Off the tie up, one by Simsbury. Reese swings it around to Joey Matteo in the far corner. Matteo gets a little bump there by McSpedden. Puck kept in by Simsbury, Matt Reese. That puck is back out to the neutral zone. Here comes William Stewart. Another Return speed. Over there. Here we go. Nick get to Pugmire. the net. Get to the net, Pugmire. There we go. All right. That's good. You know what? That's a, that's the key to that. So. That's it. Well, well, I'm up. Good defensive play by Brad Wayne to block the shot. Attempted by William Stewart. Too many guys in front of that net. Too many sticks there. We got to make sure that's not happening. Here comes William Stewart. Bradley Wang knocks down Stewart McSpedden. That puck is back out to center. Here comes Daniel Parson up ahead to Keys Van Wees. Jack Fiango drops it off to his defensive partner, Brad Wang, who chips it out to Simeon, and that hopped over Scott's stick. McSpedden. Luke Welsh played off sides. Trojans touch up. Good tip in there. Good tip in there. No icing. Simeon and Kevin McNichols. Nicholas battling behind. Luke Welsh up ahead to Tyler Gordon. Good defensive play there by Torben Wonderly. And we're going to have a penalty coming up. Or offsides. Excuse me, offsides, not a penalty. Jake, I thought it could have been a penalty. I thought it could have been a hook there. And I, and I think that, uh, you know, we need, we need a break like that to put this game in one bowl game again going into the third. So 2.42 left in this period, second period. Richfield with a 4-2 to lead. Kevin McDonough slides the puck around to Rocco Cirilli. No ice. Icing has been waved off. Simon Van Wees and Gordon slides it, decides to keep playing and slides it over to his teammate. That's a, nice there. That's a break we need here. Here we go. And icing. So the Trojans will get a late offensive uh, zone draw. Be to the left of uh, Sean Gordon. Since we needs one more player here. Who are they putting out? There we go. And Aaron Livingston gets kicked out of the faceoff top because of the late change by Simsbury. And this buck is one by Richfield and McNichols, McNicholas. Kevin McDonough chasing for the puck, bounces it off the wall to Torben Wonderly, up ahead to Petrenko. Petrenko. Will Forrest dances around McDonough. We gotta take body there, Jake. We can't be playing puck here, we gotta take body. And that net is off its moorings. In uh, prep school hockey in college, the team, uh, the, te the team that knocks the uh, 
net off. They're not allowed to change. Public schools, both teams can change. Right, right. And even even the icing rules are different than you'll see in the college yep. and professionals yep. era with, uh, the prep school, with the changes. Yeah. Prep school, the team that ices the puck can't change. You know, college, you know, NHL. It's a little bit of different rules. Here we go. I break it out there. Good. So we need we need a one bounce here. We need something to go our way a little bit. The goalie for Richfield settled down. He's made some made some good saves here. That puck is flicked out back to center, and the puck will find the stick of Brad. Brad's got to Brad's got to play that body. He's going to make sure that puck gets out there. Net is off again. We had a problem last Saturday with these nets also and against Northwest Catholic. Um, I think they're a little bit bowed, so they don't sit as flush as we hoped. Every time they touch it, it comes off. I've noticed it a lot, you know, the games that we do, or at least the ones I'm able to make, you know, the nets come off a little, e a li little easier than s some of the others. And Minute seven left. Face off to the right of Bolger, won by... Ridgefield. That puck is swung around to Nick Cullinan. It's Will Forrest. Got to be careful here. Really got to be careful here. Too much. Cullinan Too shot. shots. Over the net of Bolger. Here's Simon Van Wees. Up ahead to Matt Walker on the right side, left-handed shot. It's Rocco Cirilli. Two on two here, if we can get some speed going through neutral zone. That's it, Rocco. Nice play by the Richfield defenseman. Puck kept in, though. Simeon attempted to bank it off the boards, but that was intercepted by Simon Van Wees, and here comes careful Will here, Forrest. Careful here, careful here. Nice Good. play by Kevin. Got that stick down at the right time. Six seconds, let's make sure we keep them there here. Four, three, two. Gotta take body there. Gotta take body. And that's it. Too much, too much down there. Body, the puck's not gonna beat you without the guy holding the stick. We gotta take the body down there in those plays. So both teams with some good opportunities here in the middle frame. Only one goal in that period, that was uh, by Richfield. It's 4-2 uh, Tigers after 30 minutes of play. We still got 15 more minutes of hockey. Uh, what did you see out of the period uh, by both teams? You know what, a, a pretty a pretty up and down game so far. We had our opportunities, they had their opportunities. Uh, you know, it, it was unfortunate that we got caught uh, with a guy in a slot. And I think we had a defensive uh, switch down low on the power play goal and, and it looked like Brad had the guy and then rolled off him to the guy at the back net and uh, unfortunately the puck found its way to the guy in the, in the slot. Um, you know, we, we, we've done a good job of trapping in the zone and not letting them get a lot of speed. And, you know, quite honest with you, one or two bounces and we're good here. I think that, uh, you know, I think we've played a, a great hockey game from here on in. I think we just got to get some bounces. You know, and I think, Jake, I think that we've done what we wanted to do. And, um, you know, Richfield's a good team. Richfield's a good team, and we're, we're hopeful to, we can put some pressure on the goalie again. And, and their Richfield goalie settled down a lot that period. He wasn't giving up the crazy rebounds he gave up in the first period. And, uh, you know, it was a little more, little more smothering of the puck, and he didn't give up any rebounds. So, so uh, 30 minutes in the books, 15 more to go. Should be an exciting third period of hockey, as Roger Coombs always says, grab a soda, grab some chips, heat up a pizza. Third period action coming up next here at ICC. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Olympic rink here at ICC between the Ridgefield Tigers and the Simsbury Chochens. Ridgefield has a 4-2 lead. It's a very special night here at ICC for uh, the Simsbury community. Senior night, uh, Eddie, you were part of the festivities. Your third and final uh, uh, son, Joey, is a senior, and coming through this program has meant a lot to you and the Mateo family. What does what do these nights mean for you and the entire family? You know, you know, Jake, it, it's uh, it's a little bit happy, a little bit sad. You know, they played 
A lot of these boys have played their whole life since they were five or six right here on these rinks in Westminster at ISCC and, and over at the farms. And I tell you, it, it means a lot to come here for last night. It's very sad. I remember looking through pictures today of the first time Joey put his skates on way back at the Might House level. And this group of kids, and, and you'll know you'll know very well is because is, your brother was part of it, actually was part of the Winter Classic in Boston back in 2009. So a lot of them had gone, they won a competition. They had the best baseball seats and the worst hockey seats alive at that game. Yeah. And they saw an exciting OT win by the Bruins. Marco Sturm with that goal. And it just brings back all these memories of these kids as the youth players. You know, I, I, I have that picture framed in my basement. And I was, every time I'm down there, I look at that and, and I, you know, I think, wow, you know, time flies. And, and at that time, Jake, that was one of the first few. There wasn't, there, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't like, uh, you know, like it is now where there's uh, a lot of outdoor classics and there's two or three series games. That was it. That was number no, that two. Was, that was the only one. Yeah. And that was number two, I think, ever at that point, at that yeah. point in time for New Year's it was, Day. Uh, it was in uh, Buffalo uh, the, the year prior between the Penguins and the Sabres. It was snow. Lots of snow fell. Sidney Crosby scored the shootout winner in that one. We'll get back to this one here at ISCC and that puck by Torben. Saved there by Sean Gordon and a long stretch pass ahead. Torben doesn't Coleman. have his stick here either, Jake. Don't give up that middle slot. Ah, too much, guys. Good save. Good cut of the angle down by Bolger. Nice job. Nice job by Bolger. Cutting that angle down and making the play there. S squared up nicely to Nikki Cullinan. Tried to backhand it on Bolger. 55 seconds into this period, and yet Torben's going to get his stick at the other end. Yeah, it's it's a special night for these seniors and I think that's the emotions they've kind of rid here a little bit to this 4-2. to two. And uh, I don't think we're done yet. I think Simsbury is going to put another one in here, Jake. We're going to make this a game yet. 14 minutes left to put at least two in here. And Taylon Purdue gets checked there by Daniel Parson. Nick Pugmire tries to throw it across. And Fiango lost control of that one. And here comes. Ah, uh, you got three on two. This is nice. Looks dangerous. Luff. Looks very dangerous. Good back checking by Joey Mateo. Here's son Joey. Here nice we go. Job two, there. On, two on that, two on two. Two on two. Up the ports. Pugmire, Pugmire dances Pugmire. around. Get another Shoot one here. Oh. Nice blocker save there by. Sean Gordon, who's been one of the top net minders in the state of Connecticut. You can hear the student section say, let's go Trojans, banging on the wall. Here comes Cole Chapman. Over. Here nice comes hands. Kevin McDonough. Kevin, nice hands, McDonough. Kevin, get back out in front. Cirilli doing a nice job, going, getting back to the point while Kevin McDonough was down low. Ridgefield always likes to spring that guy up the middle. If you watch him when they break out, they're going to force the puck up the middle a little bit on you. Puck is wiffle balled off of Kevin McDonough's stick. Simeon drops it back to Kevin McDonough. Assistant captain, Kevin, it's his third or fourth game back after suffering a broken collarbone earlier in the season. Jake, this season has been rough on the seniors. Every single senior has missed at least one game this year. Been a real tough outing. Get in there. Nice. There we go. Chapman finds the back of the net. And it's 4 3. Richfield, Eddie, that goal. That next goal we talked about was critical. Trojans are, with, are within one. Jake, you know what they always say the worst lead in hockey is a two goal lead. And, yep. that's, and that came to fruition here. So Richfield probably came out a little bit slow footed. They had an opportunity early on, a big save by Bolger down low. And then we got a one opportunity. One of the toughest saves for a goalie, a backhand there by Cole in the slot. And we got Cole, a hockey game here that's now. That's Cole's second goal of the night. That's his 23rd of the season at 21 entering tonight's contest. Let's get that puck deep, Kevin. Get it deep. Oh, guys, we got to be careful there again. This is the stuff we can't start doing. They'd be calling a good back check there by Torben Wonderly. You know, good speed from, by Reese through the neutral zone again. Matty Reese threw that neutral zone with a lot of speed. Oh. 
That puck finds its way back out the center. That play, I thought earlier, Kevin McDonough, all he had to do was just fire it in. Yeah, so they're trying we, to dance around. We try to be too cute, and I think sometimes it'll, we can't be that way with this team. It's got the middle. Got to clog down the middle here, guys. Nikki Cullinan, sorry, excuse me, Matt Walker chipped the puck, and he had all he had a free he had free reign to that puck. And that puck thrown into the middle cannot be controlled there by Nikki Cullinan. McStepin fires it deep into the Trojan zone. Kevin McDonough bounces along the half wall, kept in by Ridgefield. That puck finds its way back out the center, and this icing has been waved off. So we got a one goal game here, Jake, 11 minutes to play. Looking for another break here. And you know, looking, you know, I was looking at the schedule, you know, looking at Richfield's schedule and their results, and Simsbury's been one of the top, has been one of the toughest opponents for Richfield this year in terms of scoring and the margin of victory and keeping up with the pace of them. And Simsbury's done a really nice job with that tonight. You know, this team's finally getting healthy with all the seniors coming back and with the two uh, assistant captain and captain coming back on the defensive end. You know, we played an extremely strong game against Northwest Catholic last Saturday, another undefeated team at that time. And, you know, what you're going to see is, is, is this team, this game, you know, win or lose today, this team is going to feel good about this game. And what you're going to feel is, is that no one in the state's going to intimidate them. No. You know, and that's, that's the parity that's going on right now. They, they, Simsbury has shown a lot of heart and grit tonight against the number one team in the state. And Northwest Catholic, you know, Simsbury, you know, got a beating by them 7-1 in the first match. Of it. And even though they lost 2-1 last Saturday, that was a good step in the right direction for Absolutely. Chris Day's, uh, Absolutely. Chris Day's squad. And, you know, staying healthy, you know, Having the team and the entire team to be healthy, well, far, uh, Mark Ficaro is sick, but you know, when you have all the pieces together, it, it, it makes a difference. It, it really makes a difference. And Cirilli. And this. Not icing. Oh, that's a tough call. There's no way that's icing. That's a terrible call right there. The kid took a Sunday skate on the way down to get that one up. I think if it was a curling match, you would have had the extra broom on that one, yeah. Jake, I think. I don't know if that one would have made it. Have you ever done curling? I haven't, but I was a big fan during the Olympics. And I think they've actually put in on the other rink over there, curling marks. They, they, uh, they, they have a curling facility in Norfolk. I've done curling before, but it was, I was in Canada when I did it. It was really fun. That's a, that's a, you know what? That's one of those things where it's like it's got a little popular. Come on, Drew. There's Drew Lack. Tie it up. Oh, oh. Tried to tried a little fancy move there, a little toe drag. Kevin McDonough chips Let's his just back. Get pucks on that. Let's get pucks on that. Get pucks on that. Pucks Hops on over that. Pugmire's stick. So Pugmire, Reese, and Leck, the second line out for Simsbury. Good job by Drew Leck to force that puck to be back out the center again. Nicky Cullen up the there middle. We got to crush us. him down. Don't give him that middle. Good defensive play there by Kevin McDonough. And that, in that defensive uh, duo of McDonough and Wonderly, two seniors and two big bodies, that, that's, that's an advantage for Simsbury in a lot of cases. And that's what I'm saying about coming back and getting healthy. You know, oh, guys, come on. Let's not give up the puck down puck here. fired on Bolger, and he stick, turns out aside. Nicky Cullen and shot is wide Too good of a shot. we got to pick up that guy in the high slot. Puck's got to get out here. Puck's got to get out. There we go. Good. Good. That's all right. As long as we get that puck out of the zone, let's keep forcing the puck out. Nicky Cullen. And Again, nice. we got to take the body there. Try the curl and drag. Here comes Sherlock, who had a multi-point game on Wednesday. That looked high to me. That looked like a high hit. And Drew Leck gets taken down, no call. Kevin McDonough swings it on net, and Gordon decides to keep playing it. And this puck is going to be icing. That looked a little high on Drew. I knew he was going down a little bit. That looked a little bit high on him. Good physical play there by the junior, Drew Leck. 8.25 exactly to go in this third and final frame, unless if... We are tied after 45 minutes of regulation time. This Simsbury team has played a lot of one goal games and they've played five OT games. I have to say they're not, this is not unfamiliar territory for them and the way it's gone this season. They're used to this, they're used to the spot. 
and that a lot of experience, you know, coming back, tie this game, tying these types of games. Yeah, another big save by Bolger. A good save by Bolger through traffic. Oh, watch that back door. Watch a guy in the slot. There you go. Good, good job cover, by Cole. Cole. Good job by Cole to intercept that, and Simeon clears it. Welsh cross ice dump into big change by Richfield. Sinzuri. Turn and go. Turn Zone and go and here. Turn and Richfield, go. Richfield fresh set of legs, and Fiango. He got, thought he waited he a little long on that. Careful, forcing that yeah. across ice there. That hits a body and gets a good bounce. to your breakaway on Bolger. Come on, Brad. Come on, Brad. comes Aaron Livingston, the sophomore. His brother Elijah is on the JV team. Here comes Kevin McDonough. Turnover there by McSpedden. And here comes Kevin McDonough. McDonough. Get it deep, keep it deep, keep it deep. To the catching glove of Gordon. He oh, pull the rebound Joey Mateo with the pass out front. You know, Joey has had a few very good looks. And this one goes for an icing. Listen, we've had some opportunities here. We've had some opportunities. It's just a question now of us capitalizing on one or two of them. Win or lose, this, the Simsbury's, you know, put on a great showing here tonight. You know, Jake, you know, it, it goes to, you look at the standing in the, C, in the CIAC, and, and all those teams are all within a few points of each other. And, and, you know, when you beat the number one, beat Hamden number three team, and you play Northwest number two team to a tight game, you play Ridgefield to a real tight game here tonight, just makes you realize, you know, there's not a, there's a lot of parity, and, and come playoff time, anything can happen. And, and, it's, and it's a brand new season. Absolutely. It's a, it's a brand new season. And we're getting healthier as the year goes on here. The record, you know, it does not matter if you're if you finished regular season 18 and 0 or you know five and 13 or whatever. The playoffs is a whole brand new season. Everyone's zero zero. Anything can happen. Exactly. And Good job by Torbert Wonder there, mixing it up a little bit in front of the net, tying up number two for Ridgefield. This faceoff will come to the. Right of Jackson Bolger, who gets a little water. Jackson's made some good saves here in the third period to keep us in this game. Yep, just going to say that. And Matt Reese gets kicked out of the faceoff dot, I believe. He's shaking his head. I don't think he did. No, I think it was. I think he was just upset about the whistle after the. Face off. This puck. A little misplay by the defenseman by there. McNi McNicholas. Looking for a turnover here. Looking for a turnover here. Comes Jack Fiango. Under six minutes left in regulation. Richfield has a 4 3 lead. Eddie Mateo, Nick Sinicori, Jake Austin. Good Oster. play by Jake, but by Pugmire. Good play by Pugmire. Joey Mateo working with uh, McNicholas. Comes Bradley Wang. Make the simple play work here. Make the simple play work here. Nick in the Pug blue Meyer. line. Get it in, Puggy. Ah, oh, I don't like the way this is shaping up. Let's go, boys. Too much room to operate. Kevin McNicholas swings it around. Good play. William Good Stewart. Check. Chapman bounces Switch direction. It we got no a play here. We got a one-on-one. -on -one. Here comes Dangerous. Cole Chapman. It's all right. We'll take a face off down there. That works. He's dangerous anytime he's got his hands on the puck. And he's made a lot of opportunities happen this year with his, just his control and his hard shot. And he opens the ice up for us a lot. So his speed and, and you know, people people know who he is around the state. And, and, you know, he gets shadowed a lot. He gets antagonized a lot. So he's under a lot of, uh, and you know, of spotlight. For a lot of opponents, Cole is in their game plan. Absolutely. Take him out of the game. and Oh, I thought that found the end. It was Rocco Cirilli. He'll chip it in on... Sean Gordon. 
Nice Good play check. there by Cirilli, and he gets taken down. A couple minutes, he'll be we'll be keeping an eye on Coach Day to see what he does with Jackson when he'll pull. Skate, him. skate. Here comes Cole Chapman behind Simeon. That's interference right there. No call there. Simeon, nice check. And another icing. There we go. There we go. It's good. That's good. All right, here, here's where we've got to be smart here, Jake, right? So we've got four minutes left. We've got one timeout in our pocket. Let's let's make sure we uh, we get the right combinations out. We win some face-offs and get some puck to the net here. Both teams each have one time each have one timeout. They have not used their timeouts respectively. And this shot from the point by Fiango. Goes way up high over Gordon. I think that was Wonderly. Oh, that's interference there Excuse again. Excuse me, nice Wonderly. Save. Not Fiango there. Nice save by Jackson Bolger. This is Scott Scott has got to win this battle. He's got to win this battle here. Under four minutes to go in this in this third period. Not good here. Come on, boys. Got to get this puck out. We got to get some offense and skate. Skate. Comes Kevin McDonough oh, and a turnover. Kevin. Nice, nice save. save by Jackson Bolger. And he had other ideas on Nikki Cullinan. Again, we gotta, we gotta be really careful getting that puck out of the zone at this point in the game, right? We can't be giving up that especially, kind of chance. Especially with 3.30 to go. And, you know, a one goal lead compared to a two goal lead with under four minutes left is exactly. it changes everything. It changes how you play. Tie up one by Simsbury, and that puck is thrown in the middle, and that goes wide to Jackson Bolger. Reese. Goes Matthew speed. Reese skating up on the right side, up ahead to Drew Leck, and out of Drew Leck's reach. There's Nick Puckmeyer the other way in transition. Puckmeyer tried to dangle it around. Richfield bench wanted a penalty, but. I think at this point in the game, unless it's, unless it's a really egregious, yeah, you're not going to see a call yeah. here. Let the, let the kids play. William Stewart. I thought it was a hit him on the side. I didn't think it was from behind. I thought, oh, we got to be careful here. Good play. Here comes Nick Pugmire. Three two. Pugmire takes it wide, drops it back to Leck. And that puck finds its way back out the center once again. Two and a half minutes to go on senior night here at ISCC. Ridgefield has a 4-3 lead. There's Jack Fiango. And another turnover there. Kevin McNicholas. Flex off the catching glove of Jackson Bolger. There's Bradley Wang. Two minutes to go here. We got to make something happen here. Ah, another, yeah, another giveaway. Turn over there. Don't Scott give up Simeon. the middle again, guys. Let's go. There Nicky we go. Coleman's shot goes wide on the glove hand side of Jackson Bolger. See, it's got to be a little tougher on the puck on that play. I know he's looking for Cole. Nicky Coleman. Oh, and big nice save. save there by Jackson Bolger on Will Forrest. That could be the turning point there, Jake. That could be the turning point right there. He's going to call timeout, I think. In a minute 45. I think no called indication timeout of a here. timeout as of right now. There's a timeout. And a timeout there by Simsbury. And uh, Coach Day told Torben to call a timeout. That's what Torben did. So a minute 45 left. Simsbury down by one. It's four to three. When do you pull the goalie? Jake, the other night we had a face-off in, in Northwest Catholic zone. And one minute left and we didn't pull it. And I, I'm wondering if... He's looking, I think Coach Jay is looking for a clean, precise control of the puck and possession. So yep. we've got to win this puck. We've got to break out of the zone with the possession. Uh, you know, the off the boards and the, the center ice clear is this going to put us back in, back in our back in our zone. They're going to dump it back in. We're going to go back and re-scramble again. We're going to need to win the puck clean and get a clean Blake out here. And, you know, the key right now is, is get it past that red line and get it deep. Yep. You know, let's look for a turnover in their end. But it, it comes with getting this puck in possession here yeah. and moving the puck out. 
Couldn't Big save by Bolger, though. Yeah, Let's not forget Forrest. about that. And Forrest can definitely put it in the back than that. Yes, he can. And I tell you, he had a great opportunity to end this thing. So Simsbury has used their timeout. Sean Gallagher and the Richfield Tigers still have theirs. So they have the advantage in the timeout category. They have the advantage in the score. Trojans and Tigers sighting last minute 45 off the tie one by Richfield. Matt Walker in and around deep. Here comes Nikki Cullinan. Gets disrupted there by Torben Wonderly. Will Forrest finds his line mate. There. Matt Walker blocked in front in traffic. Here comes Torben Wonderly, and Wonderly flicks it out to Rocco Cirilli. Finds the stick of Cole Here we go. Here goes the goalie. Get the go Does he have possession? And bolter has been pulled. Oh, no. Unlucky. 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 And... Missed the net. All right, let's go. Nikki Colnan, shot goes wide at the empty net. Shot blocked there by Scott Simeon. One minute remaining in this period. 60 seconds left. Trojan net is Trojan net is empty. Jackson Boulders at the bench. 4-3 Tigers. Missed it again. That's icing. And another oh, icing. Oh, they made a fatal mistake there, Jake. They that's, sure did. That's the, they sure did. You get a little, your eyes get big. You see that empty net? You get a little lucky there. You get a little lucky there. So that's the break we need now, right? So we've got possession. we got a face off in their zone. Six on five here. And a little bit of a, 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 a good break for Susbury and a little bit of a mental breakdown for Richfield there that might hurt them here. Let's hope so. 4-3 face off to the left of Sean Gordon. Oh. And what a save there through traffic. 43 seconds left in this one. Got to get to that puck. We got to get to this puck here. 30 seconds left for some magic to happen. Excuse me, 34 left. Chapman working with Kevin McNich McNicholas. Bounces it off the boards. That's it there. And All right. number five. And number five, Henry Garlic puts the nail in the coffin. It's 5-3 Tigers. And it looks like Ridgefield's going to stay unbeaten. 20 seconds left. Well, you know what? Hey, weirder things have happened, but I yep. tell you what, Sinsbury has played well tonight. Win or lose, this this was a this was a big, you know, you know, big game for them, not just because it was you know, senior night, but the way that they played, they kept themselves in, in this hockey game for all 45 minutes. You know, it, it's, it's, just, it's just proven you can play with these guys. That's all it is at this The record point. does proven, not matter. Proven you can play with the top team in the state, take it to a one-goal game, and really that's, that's the key. That's the understanding at this and point. And jumping out to a one nothing lead early in this game. And the final score here as the buzzer sounds, Richfield 5, Simsbury 3. Richfield continues its unbeaten streak, an unbeaten season. They go to 17-0. Trojans drop to 5-10-1. But a very well-played game tonight by Simsbury. You know what, Jay? You know, there's there's a lot of positives going to come out of tonight. You know, when you when you see a team who's number one in the state unbeaten come into your town and, and you play them tough, you play them to, you know, one goal game with 20 seconds left, you got to come out of there with a confidence feeling. And as you as you go through the rest of the schedule, you face the best in the state. Yep. You face Northwest Catholic. You, you, lots Played of them, them by one. Yep. You know, you know, you face these guys. You, in essence, it was a one-goal game. You beat Hamden, one of the top teams in the state. There's no, there's no difference right now. And I think this team knows that they can skate and play with them. And, and you know, from here on out, it's not going to get any tougher than this game here. You know? And hopefully, this uh, this play for. Uh Simsbury uh, can translate into uh, uh, into Monday night where uh, Glastonbury comes in uh, to Simsbury for the second uh, matchup of the Battle of the Berries at Simsbury Farms. They tied last time 2-2 back right. on December 29th at Trinity. So this is a big stretch for uh, Simsbury, these final four games. So what we have coming down the pike is the CCC has their own uh, individual playoffs, conference playoffs. So Simsbury is looking up up the charts right now. They need to come out of here and beat Glastonbury, beat East Catholic, uh, beat Avon, and uh, you know, and, be, and finish out the season with some wins there 
to basically have a shot to make the CCC's playoffs. And so it's only four teams. Top four teams, one playing four, two playing three. And, and at this point right now, we're, we're not in a fourth spot, so we're going to need to have some work to do. And But all the teams we need to beat are right in front of us. Yep. So it starts Monday night yep. against the Glastonbury team. And the last time we played Glastonbury, we were down, I believe, three or four of our players, and it was a, a little bit of a stretch for us, and we still came out of a 2-2 tie. Now, they've gotten better since then. We've gotten a lot better yeah. since then. Healthy. And we're, we're healthy, and I think that, you know, in our old outdoor rink, it might be a good, uh, a good omen for us and really turn this thing for the stretch ride home. And Mike, uh, Sinecori, Nick, and Chris Cody and I will be there on Monday night. Looking forward to that. We'll also be here on uh, Wednesday for Farmington Valley. Eddie, thank you for joining us tonight. Always a pleasure. Always, a, always, always great a to pleasure. see you. Congratulations a, to Joey. Thank you. Thank you. It's a top-notch staff, and I, I appreciate you guys having me help out tonight and fill in. And uh, I love listening to you guys on SCTV and on YouTube, and you guys do a great job, and it's a pleasure just being part of your program. Thank you your very program. much. So. Thank you very much. Nick, great job on the camera, my friend. Final score here at ISCC, Richfield 5, Simsbury 3. We thank you for joining us here for another edition of Simsbury High School Boys Hockey here on SCTV. Good night, and we will see you on Monday. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.